All right, my Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss an inside account of Boris Johnson's ill-fated leadership campaign last weekend as told largely by the Daily Express, which is his main support in the media really, and how it has possibly finished off any future chance he may have of returning because his backers seem to be absolutely furious with him. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So this may well be our sort of last hurrah of the, the chaos of the last six or so months uh, as Rishi Sunak tries to get government on a more normal, even keel. But, you know, back to the, to the weekend of the leadership contest, did Boris Johnson have his 100 nominations or not? If he didn't, then he was lying to make out that he withdrew in the interests of the party or the country, delete as appropriate, depending on which you care most about. If he did have the numbers, then he withdrew because he didn't fancy his chances of having a successful second stint. He looked at it and went, ooh, ooh I don't fancy that. No, no, you, you deal with it. I'll come back later. And although I doubt very much he did have the numbers, there's enough of an element of doubt to not be 100% sure one way or the other. One of his backers, Adam Brooks MP, claims that he was told by a senior member of the 1922 committee, no less, that the numbers were absolutely reached. But nobody on the 1922 committee, the executive committee, has actually confirmed this in public. So, is he lying? We don't know. But as far as Johnson's supporters are concerned, he did have the numbers because it was widely reported as if it were fact. He did have the numbers and he chose to withdraw from the contest because reasons. This seems to have blown up in his face. A report in the Daily Express, which is a few days ago now, explained how those working on his campaign are now furious with the blonde buffoon. Partly, it seems, because they were made to look like right prawns. They were still phoning MPs to gather support as Johnson was actually withdrawing. So he hadn't even told his supporters about dropping out of the contest as he was doing it. And this is the thing. I really don't get why people keep backing Johnson. He's completely self-centred to the point where he never considers anybody else, ever. The most obvious thing in the world to, is to tell your active campaigners, do you know what, I'm pulling out, lads. But no, what even have occurred to him to do that? Because the people who were ringing round, working hard on his campaign, they were nothing to him. Absolutely nothing. Doesn't care about them one jot. So they're really upset that they were still trying to drum up support, oblivious to the fact he'd already ended his campaign. But more than that, they are now complaining that he basically handed the job to Sunak on a plate, that it would have been better if he had not stood at all. Obviously, Johnson isn't a secret Sunak supporter. In fact, it took him a good long while to even congratulate Sunak. A full day, really. Cameron May and even Truss offered their support very quickly. That failure to quickly support Sunak fed divisions in the party, probably as intended. He wants Sunak to be seen as the great betrayer, unworthy of people's trust because... He couldn't be trusted himself. Johnson clearly thinks it'll serve him well to prevent Sunak building strong foundations. He will not mind Sunak's government failing and coming back to take over next spring or summer, whatever's in his plans. In fact, Johnson's plan may well not have changed really from the original one where he imagined Truss would crash and burn, maybe not so quickly, and then take over afterwards. But he may have blown it. He may still be the member's choice. But even if Sunak falls, and there's a big if about that now, Johnson might be shunned by MPs personally now. The argument amongst his support base seems to be that by standing, he prevented another candidate, a candidate from the far right, taking part in the contest. Because with the need to get 100 nominations and you've got 357 Tory MPs, it would have been fatal for any faction within the party to have two candidates running. Sunak had the support of moderates in the party. He was always going to get the most support. Mordaunt represents the right of the party, but she's not as hard on certain policies as many of her ERG colleagues would like. So they would have preferred to get behind, say, Braverman or even Badenoch. But with Johnson standing, there was no point because they would just split their vote. But given that Johnson stood and then stood down fairly late on, 
all his efforts really did, as far as they were concerned, was crystallise some support around him and then scatter the far-right nominations and give Sunak a clear run at the title without the need for a vote even amongst members. If Johnson hadn't stood at all, they could have tried to get that support around Badnock or Braverman. As it is, you know, Sunak clearly did deals with them. It's not like the ERG got nothing out of this. They've got assurances on immigration and the Northern Ireland Protocol. I don't know what assurances, but they seem to have them. But they'd have preferred someone who actually wanted to implement their, to implement their ideas. Someone who was in tune with them. Not someone who was doing it as a concession. But now the far right have lost their chance at proper control. They have those concessions and they'll almost certainly realise that Sunak intends to go slow on as many of them as he can get away with. Because from my point of view, the likely series of events is that Johnson did fall short of the 100 nominations needed. Well short, really. And just lied about getting them to save face. But those who were trying to support him believe he did have the numbers and stepped down because he was too weak to pull the various factions together under his leadership, because that's what he said. In fact, the Daily Express were claiming that he actually had 110 nominations. I have to say, I'm not really buying it, but it doesn't really matter. It's what they believe. And they believe that he had the numbers. They believe that if only he had the, the resolve, he would have been fine. Because as long as... The only people who would actually split the party are the far right. They're the only ones insane enough to. So from their point of view, as long as Johnson did as they told him, he'd have been fine. His position wouldn't have been threatened. They think he had the numbers and stepped down and they are reported to be absolutely fuming about it. They, they were made to look stupid by not being told of his decision until they saw it in the same way I did in social media. And now they've got Sunak as a leader, which for various reasons is basically the last thing they wanted. It also triggered an emergency contingency as well, apparently. I didn't realise this at the time. But according to the Express, they actually tried to get Pretty Patel to take to make a late bid. Because by this time, they'd have preferred Braverman, but she'd already publicly backed Sunak. It was like too late to get someone else in the race. So out of desperation, they tried to go with Pretty Patel. Pretty, will you stand pretty, please? You know, but she said, no, no, too late. Uh, and apparently she wasn't very happy. I think the implication was that she was a little bit miffed that some of these people had backed Truss. And Truss, of course, had no cabinet position for Patel. So bound to be a little bit of bad blood there. So the upshot of this may be an unexpected bonus for Sunak. Because just as Johnson clung on for months longer than he should have, just because Tory MPs couldn't think of who to replace him with. It's like, well, it's all right getting rid of him. Who do you replace him with? The same now benefits Sunak. If some of Johnson's supporters from last weekend are less likely to back Johnson in the future because he might just pull the rug out from under their feet again, then it may be that insufficient support coalesces around anyone that can seriously challenge Sunak. As such, even if Sunak still doesn't turn the polls around, he looks on course for a major defeat at the next election, Tory MPs may still have to stick with him due to there being no credible options. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.